Ryder Hamilton was born in southern Ontario in Bruce County. Her family emigrated to Manitoba. They farmed near Clearwater, Miami, Manitoba. Eventually, she came to Thunder Bay and worked at the Paris dry goods business here in Thunder Bay. Uh, she met her husband, who was the owner, but they became joint owners, which was rather interesting for a woman in those days, and they ran a dry goods business here in the, around 1890. They had a child who unfortunately was still born, but quite tragically after that, her husband died suddenly at the age of 30. And in 1901, she went to Europe in Berlin and Paris. She studied art professionally at art schools and with noted masters. She went to Victoria in the beginning of 1913. She took on volunteer work. She worked for the Belgian consulate. She was involved in charity work to support the war effort including sales of paintings that she could make in order to benefit contributions for the war effort. In 1919, she approached and worked with a friend of hers, J.A. Patton, who was the editor of a veterans magazine called The Gold Stripe, then went to France with the idea of documenting the places where Canadian soldiers had fought and fell. She stayed in France until about 1925. She spent some time in and out of hospital. She wasn't well. She lost a lot of weight. She lost the sight of one eye. She was a woman in her 50s living out on the battlefields in a hut or in a tent sometimes. And it was physically very demanding work and, and frightening work, I think, too. She's painted a lot of the cemeteries so that families would understand what the landscape was like, particularly for their sons. So she labels certain things like the Princess Pat's in that cemetery or this particular cemetery or this particular site. She wrote about loving to see Vimy because she got there on a cold, wet day, and she said, I need to experience the way they did. In her training in the first decade of the 20th century in France, she learned the kind of classic techniques of painting in the traditional way, light and shadow, modeling, very careful, detailed work. But she also was exposed to ideas that were more impressionistic. She liked to paint in a way that drew attention to the landscape and to the monuments that had honored particular Canadian soldiers at Vimy, at Passchendaele, at the Battle of the Somme. But her style was often to include uh, a bright sunshine or the, the poppies that grew in the trenches or in the backgrounds of the damaged architecture and landscape in order, I think, to emphasize a positive sense of regeneration, of hope. And so she often used the sense of regrowth in the landscape done in an impressionistic style, I think, to suggest the future. There are a number of works that specifically honor Canadian soldiers in particular places, as I mentioned, Vimy or Passchendaele. But there's also generalized scenes of the landscape which show the scarring, the damage, and how regrowth would begin. And she also specifically addressed how, the, in some cases, the battlefields were being restored, so filling shell holes or, or clearing areas which had, had debris. So she attempted to give a sense of what was going on in those years afterwards. It's about reality of the landscape and then what's going to improve it as flowers come up or things are cleared away or life returns to a, a fair in a market town. I mean, how can the world go back to where it should be? Um, in the end, she was honored by the French government. She was given the Order of the Palme Académique, which is the second highest award after the Légion d'honneur that the French government could award. Was, she was the first Canadian to receive that. In 1925, she donated the works to the then Dominion Archives, now Library and Archives Canada. And the works were put in the documentary art and history section. So they were never designed as a art for art's sake to go into a gallery, they went into a historical collection. She died in 1954. She was hospitalized at the time and um, died. And her will stipulated that one of her favorite paintings, a painting called Maternity, which was painted in 1905 when she was an art student, she donated that to the city of Thunder Bay. And it's now on display in the city hall here in Thunder Bay. Her ashes were returned to Thunder Bay as well, and she's buried in Riverside Cemetery, along with her husband and stillborn child uh, in the same plot. She was very intense. The letters she writes talk about how I have to do this. I must do it. It means something to me and to the soldiers and their families. I mean, she was incredibly dedicated and determined. She insisted that she had work to do, and it had to be finished.